A tree gives glory to God by being a tree. This is one of my favorite quotes from Thomas Merton. And I think that trees are good models of the dynamics that we find in the Lord's Prayer, which we hear in scripture today. I recently read a book by Leonardo Boff called The Lord's Prayer, A Prayer of Integral Liberation. And in it, he talks about the multidirectional nature of the Lord's Prayer. Um, So if we look at the first half of the prayer, this is really where we focus on God and God's plans and desires for the world in which we live. And as a woman in the church, I often struggle with male imagery for God and, and have for a long time. But what I appreciated in in Boff's book was that he talked about the idea that this name that Jesus gives God is really a, a nickname and a term of endearment for a beloved ancestor. And so as I think in my own life about uh, an ancestor with a nickname, I think of my Graham. Um, she was a kind woman and um, every night as I would fall asleep uh, when I was growing up, she would rub my back. Um, and just listen to me as I shared concerns about my family or what was happening in the world. And so as we think about the beginning of this prayer and this God that we love, um, we, we know that this is a God who loves us and knows us intimately um, and just wants to rub our backs as we, as we live our lives and work for justice in the world. So we move on in the prayer. Um, thinking about thy will be done. Um, This is really a statement of hope and faith and trust in God, uh, a belief that God desires a world of peace and justice where all needs are met and and everyone can flourish. And so um, by stating this line, we are stating that I believe in this vision of of God's will for the earth and, and want to bring it to fruition. As we move on to the second half of the prayer, so the the secondary dynamic, um, this dynamic is really about being rooted where we are on the holy ground where we stand um, as members of a community, as as finite humans with, with concrete needs. And so as we think about our daily bread, um, what I find so beautiful about this statement is the, the plural pronouns that we use throughout this prayer, this remembrance that we are a community and that we are interconnected and, and called to support and love one another. I recently um, saw a statistic that said maybe 7% of the world's grain comes from Ukraine. And so um, even as we think about um, kind of suffering and war that's happening in other places, um, this image of grain and of bread is a true reminder that we are intimately interconnected through our food systems um, and in ways that, that we might not even imagine. Um, And so again, here, I think that trees are beautiful examples of how we can support our sisters and brothers and neighbors um, as a community to meet our needs. Um, So there's been a a kind of way of thinking that's thought that forests are, are areas where trees are fighting for each other for resources, survival of the fittest. But newer science has realized that actually forests are places of collaboration and community. Um, So trees' roots interconnect underneath of the ground, and there are mycelium and fungus that grow on them that allow trees of different species to communicate with each other and share resources between them. Um, So if one tree is suffering in one part of the year um, or doesn't have access to the resources that it needs, another tree can send them along and vice versa. And so in that way, the trees are able to meet each other's needs out of their abundance. And so I think this is a beautiful image that that we are called to live out as well as as the community of God and as people who are trying to bring about God's reign on the earth. The final dynamic of this last part of the prayer is this idea of lead, lead us not into temptation. And I know that um, as I do ecology work at the Ignatian Solidarity Network, this um, I think my personal temptation is a temptation to despair, is a temptation to hear the news about climate change or about racism or about migration and to feel like 
there's nothing that we can do. It's too late. Hope is lost. And so in this way, again, the Lord's Prayer is a reminder that, one, this work is not mine to do alone. I do it. We do it in community. Um, and again, a reminder that this God who knows and loves me and, and all of us and who is close enough to rub my back and accompany me um, has a great plan plan for the earth um, if, if I am willing to trust it. And so um, the final part of the gospel that really resonates with me is related to this and this, this idea that Jesus says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. And I know that sometimes I get so overwhelmed that I forget to ask. I forget to ask for the help of my neighbor. I forget to ask for the, the spiritual food that I need from God um, for, for, for Eucharist. And so um, in this way, uh, Jesus is just reminding us that that you know we we do not walk alone, and that we um, we do this work in community. And so, going back to this image of a tree and and this uh, multi-directional dynamic, I think that trees are images of being deeply rooted in your place, in community, in in sharing resources and caring for those around us, while also its branches are reaching up to the transcendent, to this God who loves us and who invites us to engage in, in bringing about the reign and the, the kingdom of God. And so my prayer for all of us is that as we enter into the dynamics of the Lord's Prayer, that we can be consoled, that we can trust in God's plan, um, and that we can be bread for one another and lean on our neighbors um, when we need the sustenance to carry us forward to bring about the reign of God.